Some incoming matchmaking changes for Gambit Prime. New powerful rewards as a result of the Vanguard v Drifter Allegiance Quest, and more information about the Reckoning Tier 3. What's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is March 14th, a Thursday, and you know what that means. It's time to take a step away from the Crucible, stop trying to get Void Gills for a little bit, and hear what's coming up next in the world of Destiny in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. So let's go ahead and dive on into some of the biggest bits of information we learned about this week. Now, first up, a lot of you Guardians out there have already gotten your Allegiance quest done. You've pledged your allegiance either to the Vanguard, or more particularly, Warlock Honor, or to cool old Uncle Drifter. And you may have been a little bit more than disappointed with the rewards that you got for doing so. Well, don't you worry, because apparently the rewards are going to be stacking over the next couple of weeks. That's right, depending on your choice in this Allegiance quest, you'll receive a set of rewards specific to your Allegiance. Each week at Reset, you're going to receive a small package as gratitude for your pledge to either the Vanguard or to the Drifter. And this is going to go on for the rest of the season of the Drifter. So, what exactly is it you're going to be getting? Well, if you went with the Vanguard, here's your Vanguard weekly package. Each week you'll get one piece of powerful Vanguard gear, a boon of the Vanguard, 10 Vanguard Tactician Tokens, and 1 Enhancement Core. Modest rewards to be sure. If you went with the Drifter, you're going to get one piece of powerful Gambit gear, a Collector Synth, Invader Synth, Sentry Synth, and a Reaper Synth, plus 100 Infamy Points. And if you were to ask me there, it does seem like the rewards are a little bit stacked in favor of one side over the other. But that's alright of course, if you're a player with multiple Guardian classes, you can of course run both sides of this quest to get both of the rewards every single week. Not too bad. And I'm glad they decided to extend the rewards for this Allegiance quest far beyond us finishing the first part. Anyways, moving on, we've got the Reckoning Tier 3 going live on Friday, March 15th. This will be the final tier of the Reckoning in-game PvE activity, and we now know that it's going to come with a recommended power level of 680. So you're going to need to do some serious grinding to make sure you're of the appropriate level before you try to take this challenge on. And just like Tiers 1 and 2, there will be matchmaking available for Tier 3, as well as some modifiers, which we'll be revisiting in just a bit. But of course, first, don't forget, tomorrow, the Invitations of the Nine will also begin. The first thing you'll need to do is track down Xur. In addition to his exotic inventory, he'll also offer a quest item for you to complete each week for up to 9 weeks. Each week you engage, you'll be invited to learn more about the Nine and unlock lore pages to dive deeper into their story. So make sure you're prepared. We'll likely be covering all of that in the Xur video we put out on Friday. But anyway, stepping back into the Reckoning for just a moment, we're actually going to be seeing a change with some of the modifiers that are active in there. If you remember on Day 2 of the Reckoning, right after the Season of the Drifter went live, the modifiers were glass and it was not that fun. There was certainly quite a bit of feedback about that particular modifier in this game mode, and it seems like Bungie is paying attention, since they're going to be addressing that very modifier in an upcoming hotfix. Here's what they had to say. They state that in early playtests at the studio, Prism actually proved to be more challenging than they intended in higher tiers of Reckoning, and that they had planned to remove it in the first patch proactively. But when they launched last week, they collected some fairly positive feedback with Prism and wanted to react quickly to remedy that change. So basically, they were going to previously remove Prism because they thought it made Tiers 2 and maybe Tier 3 a little bit too hard. But with the positive feedback that the community gave with the Prism modifier, for those who don't know, Prism basically makes it so that you have a different elemental singe every 30 seconds or so. And because of that positive feedback, they decided to change their minds. But that's not where things end. They go on to state that since glass seemed to be more problematic, we wanted to take action there too. Tentatively planned for Hotfix 2.2.0.2, we will be replacing glass with prism. Tier 3 goes live tomorrow, so we'll continue to monitor feedback and make adjustments as needed. This is something I'm actually so happy to hear. I was definitely not a fan of the glass modifier in the Reckoning. It just made things feel far too unfair with the taken hobgoblins uh, one to two shotting you from all across the map. It definitely made the Reckoning feel a bit like a slog and definitely, in my opinion, was not very fun. To the point where it was like, if glass is live, I'm just not playing Reckoning that day. And I'm sure a lot of other Guardians out there felt the same. So I thought it was important to bring this up. I'm really happy that they're going to be bringing back Prism. 
I'm glad that glass is going away, but I'm also kind of worried because in their early playtest, they were worried that Prism made things a little bit too difficult in later tiers. We've got tier 3 getting ready to go live, and if Prism's active in there, we're going to have to see exactly how that affects us. But anyways, I just wanted to share that bit of good news for The Reckoning. Now let's talk a bit about Gambit Prime. Because we're going to be seeing a couple of quality of life changes coming to that game mode. First things first, we're seeing some revised matchmaking. Here's what Bungie says. With the release of this very blog article, Gambit receives some updates to matchmaking. Gambit is a team-based activity and as such, players who are in pre-made fire teams have a communication advantage. To offset that advantage, we've raised the internal skill rating of pre-made fire teams to pull in higher skill enemies to fight against. With this change, even as a solo player, you'll still have a chance. Plus, your other match fire teammates should be higher skilled as well. Solo players of low skill should expect to match other solo players more frequently. Higher skill teams will also match teams more frequently. So it seems like they've tuned the old skill-based matchmaking in the Gambit game mode just a little bit further. To the point where people who are in fire teams are probably going to be more likely to match up against other fire teams, or if they're matching up against solo players, it's going to be solo players of extremely high skill. Which I suppose on one hand does work for higher skilled players who tend to solo queue in Gambit and Gambit Prime. I think we've all had the experience of jumping in there and then being put on a team with a bunch of blueberries who have no idea what they're doing and trying to backpack that to victory can seem pretty impossible. So hopefully the matchmaking experience is going to be a little bit better in Gambit from here on out. As those changes went live at the time of this article, we really haven't had too much time to test it out. So I'm going to need you Guardians to hop in there and let me know what your experiences are. But that's not the only change coming for Gambit Prime. Shortly after the release of Gambit Prime, players began filling their inventory with Prime Armor Synths. Tentatively planned for Hotfix 2.2.0.2, players will be able to exchange a stack of 5 cents for 100 Glimmer from the Drifter. The intention of this isn't to give players a means of acquiring large amounts of Glimmer, but strictly to help address inventory issues. So of course, yes, uh, now that Gambit Prime is out, they've added another consumable to our already stacked list of consumables on the inventory page. So this is going to be a way for you to kind of use some of those extra cents to clear up some inventory space. I'd imagine this was a pretty swiftly made decision with the fact that you're only getting 100 Glimmer from the Drifter, but like they said, it, it's not about getting Glimmer, they're just trying to get you a way to dump some of those extra synths that you don't need. Although maybe in the future they could think about changing that so that turning it in gives you a little bit of reputation instead. But alright Guardians, that is pretty much it for everything we wanted to cover in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. About the only other thing I can think of to remind you of is the Bungie Bounty that's going to be starting on March 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on PS4, and then the other Bungie Bounty starting on April 3rd at the same time. This time for the PC platform. Of course, all of those games will be live streamed over on the Bungie Twitch page at twitch.tv forward slash Bungie. But alright, Guardians, that is pretty much it for the biggest bits of news in this week's TWAB. How do you feel about the modifier changes in The Reckoning? Were you a fan of the glass modifier? If you were, I hope you have Thorn, because you're the type of person that would be using Thorn. But do any of you Guardians think that replacing glass with Prism was a good move? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. But alright, that is going to be it for this one, Guardians. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.